portals or API products. But here we go. Here is uh, Jarvis Carr. Thank you very much for joining. All right. How are thank you? you so much. Um, thank you so much for having me. Can you make sure? Can you hear me okay? Can you see my yeah. screen? Okay. Yeah, you're all good. I just need to see your screen. If you can present that, then we can. Uh, then I'll uh, leave you alone. <laughs> okay. Can you see my screen? Okay. It's coming up. Yeah, I just want to maybe pop it in uh, presentation mode. Okay. All right. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah. Go for it. All right, and you can also see my face okay, right? <laughs> okay. All right, well, thank you so much. Um, uh, welcome to this session. So I know we have some glitches with, uh, around, but hopefully I can um, get through this thing without any te technical problem. So uh, welcome again to my session here, and I'm going to try my best to present to you something about what we learned through the past uh, several many years of the uh, web service to API evolution within the company. And um, my name is Jarvis Carr. I'm the enterprise architect at Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance. And we have been on the API journey for uh, quite a bit of time. Um, I would say we started with the uh, SOAP-based web service back in 2003 or four. Uh, so it's been a long journey for us, and then we eventually evolved into the API. So we have learned a lot of the lesson, and we'd like to share with you all today, and in the sense to tie to this topic called digital transformation. So today, you with the COVID, with all the push, the digital transformation, the, the need to drive changes is, has never been greater before. And in order to make sure that how can we support a digital, support a business transformation. I strongly believe that API is going to be a big keys and big aspect uh, to power this movement. So in this uh, session, I would like to share with you six different things that I would like you to take away from this session so that you can go back to, after this conference, you can go back to uh, talk to your team to see how to implement that in some form and fashion. It, uh, some of them you already have implemented al already. So. Here it goes. So that's the uh, main purpose for this section. Hopefully, you get some good value out of it. So, um, hello. I would like to say hello, Paris. But in this situation, hello, uh, everybody from everywhere around the world. So, the, with the seasonal changes, um, I'm at Indiana right now, looking outside right now. Uh, it's getting all the leaves are falling, and so we're getting ready for the winter. So as we notice our surroundings, sometimes it's good to slow down to look at everything around us. The nature is such an amazing thing. It knows how to adapt, how to transform, to continue to grow and to survive. And if we slow down sometime, pay a little bit of attention, it just we can notice so many of these kind of things actually happening around us. We just never maybe pay attention. We're too busy to look at many different things. So if we look at the nature, it needs to survive and grow. It has to transform itself. Why don't we think about that analogy back into our daily life? So in the sense of transformation, uh, you can call it as a buzzword, digital transformation or business transformation. Eventually, it's just a way that we have to evolve our current mental model, business model, technology landscape to take advantage of the new things, uh, new enablement to leverage, to bring more business value in the sense to adapt, to grow, and survive. So we're pretty much the same as the, what the nature is uh, going right now. But when you look at the nature, there's many things behind the scene, underneath the ground, the root system is why it support the tree to transform. When you look at the weather, when you look at the animal, they all have different um, things behind the scene to power the movement. So in today's talk, it's mostly talking about one important aspect of powering this digital transformation is API movement. But let's go back to the digital transformation. Um, is this is a pretty much a big buzzword. I think you all heard about that. I'd like to give you a few sample. I uh, just want to make sure that we all understand that digital transformation, the footprint is really everywhere nowadays. So for example, at the healthcare industry, we all heard that medical checkout via smartphone, using AI to diagnose the problem, care robot, and so on and so forth. 
all this kind of thing is evolving and transforming the healthcare industry. But when you look deeper behind the scene, API is there everywhere to enable all this kind of movement. The restaurant industry, um, it's a funny little picture here, but you have seen many news about robotic restaurant is coming. Actually, it's not coming, actually it's already there. In fact, in China, there's many different cities that has a full scale, fully automated restaurant already in place. Uh, South Korea as well. So it's just a matter of time, all these things continue to evolve and change the business model, how to make things more efficient, effective to service, uh, serve the customer. But when you look deeper, API is also everywhere to help to connect all those pieces in order for this movement to work. Now look at the beauty or cosmetic industry. Uh, seeing is believing in this industry. Augmented reality has been there and will be there to transform this industry. But when you look deeper, how to enable all this kind of fancy thing to drive more uh, purchase, AI is also behind the scene to make all this magical thing to happen. And then Imagineering, Disney. Um, have you heard about something like there's a stunt robot right now? There's a stunt doubles. So the APIs behind the scene can have a communication with the robot that every time you launch that thing, you always calculate everything and land on the same spot. Things are just evolving so much to the point that almost all the industry around us are adapting, trying to find a way to advance, to survive and grow. But you, if you look at the common pattern, API is behind almost everywhere. Okay, this picture is a little bit scary here. All right, um, look at the farming. You may think the farming industry is a little bit uh, old or whatnot, but in Japan, farmers are actually using robots to scare away bears. This is such an amazing thing, and when you apply some more IoT devices there, guess what, maybe make it very efficient and effective, but behind the scene, if you look deeper, API is there to scare indirectly. So, and you also heard about headless technology. Uh, Historically, when we build application system as a monolithic system, you have front end, middle tier, back end. But as the technology evolved, there's many different channels that we can have a touch point with the consumer. Smart speaker, IoT, social media platform. There's this trend called headless technologies that we can apply that to create multiple different channels and touch point with our customer for sales, for service, for support or whatnot. But if you look deeper, API is what enabled this whole thing to happen. API is there to decouple the things. And then MDM computing. Now, I wish I can see the audience here. Right now, I can only see my screen, which is one bad thing about uh, speak like this. But if I were in person live, I'd like to see a hands raised up. How many of you have smart device in your home? And how many have Alexa? Uh, how many have you have many different things? You, uh, one of my good colleagues, he has, well, 13 Alexa in his house. But this movement is moving around, moving sorry. forward. what was that? Well, sorry about that. This really works. That's the showcase for That's you That's okay. <laughs> so with the ambient computing, the interesting thing is that as IoT devices continue to happen, it try to create a seamless experience that when the end user walk into an environment with all the computing devices around, you don't actually feel like you're interacting with a computing uh, device. It's just all embedded within the process. And guess what? API is there to glue everything together. That's the magical thing here. So now let's go back to digital transformation and the push. Like I mentioned in the intro, with the COVID, um, I saw this kind of the poll a long time ago. It's kind of a bit funny thing, but you kind of get the point. Company had been trying to push for digital transformation or customer um, uh, user experience for a long time. COVID really just kicked it. Uh, you can see a lot of the research from Gartner, McKenzie, Forrester. COVID really just pushed this thing several years fast forward uh, into the future. The demand for digital channel has never been greater before. So the drive for digital transformation is greater than before. So back to this talk is that how can we position ourselves 
to be just like the nature to enable this thing to happen. But first and foremost is that what get all of us here in some way could be the obstacle for us to get to the next level. Historically, how we run project is that there's a start day and there's an end day. We deploy the production and just support it and go for the next project. One big theme here is that API is not a project. It's a journey. It's a program. I want to make sure that we all got that mindset in place first. And in fact, there's this thing called API-centric architecture. API, when we apply it correctly, is the abstract layer for your core system. It's also a glue to glue all the different components together. Uh, you all heard of Michael's service architecture. You all heard of many different kind of ways to tie all the different systems together. And in, in a way, it's also a decoupler to create a very flexible architecture, for example, the headless um, architecture that we were just talking about earlier. So all this thing is an API-centric architecture. So one thing I'd like you to uh, really look into is that in your overall enterprise architecture uh, landscape, you should really treat API almost to become the centric of your architecture. So now when we talk about API architecture, a lot of the time we can think of this thing called the technical piece of the architecture, things like API gateway. Make sure we don't go without a suitable API gateway for your uh, structure. Uh, not all API gateway uh, are the same. We have a lot of great API gateway vendors here, like WSO2 and uh, MuleSoft, and um, just listen to uh, to them. They present a very good um, offering to make the API journey better, better. And we also have about API publisher and subscribers. And historically, many people think about why you even need to have a publisher and subscribers? Mostly, are you like an eBay trader or those kind of uh, or Stripe that you want to present API for people to consume? So don't just think about publishing and subscribing is only for external, internal user, internal application developers. All can be greatly benefit from this uh, publisher and subscriber. So I will leave all these things to different uh, track. You can hear more about this thing. What I want to get to is that when we think about API architecture, a lot of the time we start thinking about the technicality. We start thinking about the API gateway, publishers, subscribers, security, all those things. Those are all important things. But the thing I would like to mention here is that how to position this API-driven architecture to support a digital transformation is more than just a technical thing. Uh, there will be six things that I would like to share with you that you can go back after this conference uh, next Monday to talk to your team to think about how to implement some of this concept and idea to support a digital transformation. Many of these things I would like to mention, it's not particular science, it's not really technical, it's a little bit more of an art and science in, in combined. Okay, so the sixth thing, let's go. The first one is the API product owner. Um, I wish I can see all of your uh, reaction. Um, maybe there's a surprise reaction, or maybe there's a nod in your head. It's like, okay, I heard that before. So why I mentioned about the first and foremost thing about API product owner is that if nobody owns the API, then everybody's owned it. When everybody owns it, then nobody owns it. I kind of replay with the words there. But the point here is that API is such a intricate thing to enable your IT and business. If there's no such a single voice to represent the whole API, to look after the API like a forest custodian, then just going to be a free-for-all game. When that happens, your landscape will become very difficult to manage and control down the road. It's always very easy when you first just have one or two projects, just launch it. But as you move forward, it's a very critical to have a product owner that oversee all the APIs as a single source of truth to get to. And we can go into more detail about this role, but in interest of time, let's move on to the next one. And one little point here is that this is particularly important for the reusable APIs. One of the purpose for API is to promote reusability. The next thing is the API development team. Now, all reusable APIs should be developed and maintained by a centralized team. 
and not and then the non-reusable APIs is okay to be developed and maintained by project teams. Now this could come in with a lot of politics and turf war, may not be war, within your organization. It really depends on the scope, the landscape, the structure, and the scale of your API developments. API, again, is for reusability, is to glue things together, is to enable the couple uh, application at the end, eventually to help the business transformation. So it's a very critical that the planning, the development can, need to be centralized, started with the API product owner and then the development teams. It's important to have a centralized team to have the same design philosophy, the, the coding standard, and all those things continue to evolve as your program grows. Without that, what will happen is that each and every team will make their best attempt to make things as reusable, as great and good as possible. And for those of you in the IT industry for a while, you know that's an illusion. It, may, it likely will not happen. When the deadline throw on your table, your blinder is on, you charge for the day, you forget about all the other good stuff. So it's critically important to have an API development team to take care of all the reusable APIs for the company. Next one is the API roadmap. So every important thing and long-term items for the company deserve a roadmap. I'm sure you have seen enough roadmap in your career, but I'm not sure you have seen any API roadmap. When we're going to expand, for example, the policy API, when we're going to have more stuff inside it, each of the component that we put within each of the uh, resources path could require a whole bunch of different kind of work. So what's our roadmap? When a new application comes in to want to do some new things, how can they find out what are all the APIs? If there's no such thing in there, should they just roll their sleeve and then clone the repo and then do their own? Or can they have a way to look at, OK, well, next quarter, the thing I'm looking for will be there. Can I negotiate with the product owner, the API product owner, to say, can we expedite that? Can we work together? Can we do planning together? Without an API roadmap, that's impossible. When that's not present, then the loudest and most important project will win. When a situation happens, you all know things could go into haywire. So API roadmap is something that can bring the teams together and you can set the priority and set the direction for the whole company towards the API future by understanding all the different business roadmap, different business strategies so that we can position this API roadmap to fit this business direction. Then the API development team, API product owner can work towards this. It's a critically important aspect. The next one, API architecture, just like any architecture concept, we have to look beyond the tree for the forest. When we are deeply into developing one particular API for a one particular application, it's very easy to blindside the overall high level landscape. How can this API be positioned eventually to leverage, to be extendable, flexible, reusable for different applications? Or does it even need to? What's the guideline? How should I position this API? Is it a reusable API? Is it not a reusable API? Um, just like any technical uh, uh, construct in IT, if we don't have a solid architecture to guide that, it could become a wild forest. You may not even be able to step into it. Maybe a snake will come in and bite your feet if, you don't, if you're not careful. Versus it can become a planted garden it's very well organized. You can walk into it knowing that this session is for what kind of plants, that session is for what kind of flower. You will know if you have the architecture in place. So certain things, for example, like MuleSoft, they have some recommendation, like the three layers of the APIs, experience API, process API, system APIs. I strongly recommend um, you look into adopting or look into reusing some of your uh, architecture uh, principle or guideline to structure an API architecture so that teams or API development teams have a uh, structural way to create and maintain the APIs. 
So essentially, you need to have the ability to oversee this overall API ecosystem to achieve the long-term reusability. Without a solid API architecture, when deadline comes along, when project priority comes along, you will have a wild forest down the road. So API architecture is also a very important thing there. Now, the next thing is standard and guideline. Now, when we talk about API nowadays, we're basically mostly talking about RESTful APIs with the JSON as the data structure. Um, so go back to the HTTP protocol, right? Um, get, put, post, delete, um, that's it. Seem like we already have a very well structured standard from HTTP protocol, and then just put the data inside that, the payload, JSON structure, and that's it. How difficult can it be? So the problem is that it might not be as simple as you think, because when you design API, for RESTful API is a resources-based API. So when you have to decide, okay, how do you, how do you name this path? How do you name this content within there? Are you gonna have some advanced features interlinking different APIs? Many of those kind of things, if you don't have a standard and guideline, when you get into the detail implementation would be a really, really dangerous thing. The development teams, if they don't have any guideline and standard to guide them how to design the APIs, it will be a very challenging and chaotic situation. From my experience, it's very important to have a standard uh, in place and guidelines. Now you have to decide what is standard, you have to govern that, what is guideline, just best practice. But the key here is that do not try to reinvent a standard or API standard. There are many, many API standards out there. Try to find one that can that's closely match your uh, architecture principle. Leverage that one, adopt that, and then modify that and enhance that to fit your organization need. Last but not least, the number six point here, how to position the API to support digital transformation is data. The JSON data within the API payload is nothing but data. Data is new oil in this world, and we all know that with AI and ML. Data needs to be managed and governed. When typically, when we do API development, we don't quite think about data governance. We just pull data from the backend system, or we just write data into the backend system. And then we write some documentation for the front end. But without the data governance and structure, your policy type you represent in the rest, uh, RESTful API could have a danger to be different than your core policy system, what active means. Those are the very dangerous situation. If your customer facing application pull this policy as an active, has a different translation than your customer service uh, or uh, uh, operator put off from the back end. If you see different things, you're in trouble. So data governance inside the API landscape is also a very critical thing. Do not overlook the importance of that. Ideal is that when you develop API data structure, the JSON model using swag and all those kind of thing, think and work with your data governance group to make sure that cohesively, you can even be able to trace back this field on this JSON data model can go all the way back to this field in your data definition and your data governance structure, okay? So those are the six things. To implement to position API for now, you notice I say X, Y, Z, I do not say digital transformation now. If we implement these six things well and mature them along the way, you'll be able to position API for almost anything, not just the digital transformation, but in the talk, in the uh, nature of this talk here is the digital transformation. Again, we kept API product owner, API development team, API roadmap, API architecture, API standard gu guideline, and then last but not least, API and data governance. These are the six things that I would like you to take away from this talk so that when you go back into your real world after this nice conference, you can talk to your team, talk it through to see how much you already implement this. Does, does this thing make sense? At least trigger some kind of discussion talk with your team to find out which one we want to take advantage of to try to push this through. From our experience, 
these are the critical success factors to position the API to help the company to transform. Okay, one more thing. We are smarter than me. So with some of our experience here is that when we evolve from uh, traditional development into the API development, a lot of the time you cannot quite find the right talent. So one thing I'd like to share is that we need to continue to discover the hidden talent. A developer may not have too much opportunity. In, he or she might be the best person to take on this role. Uh, you just have to be open-minded to provide opportunity for your staff. And then be ready to work with different people and be ready to agree to disagree. Because when we talk about API development, a lot of the time it's taxonomy. It's different mental model collapsing together. So have an open mind, work together with different people, especially when you work on different API, have different domain knowledge. You have to reach out to many different groups to pull those information together. So to build that successfully, we are smarter than me. When you can cl collaborate to get all those domain knowledge together, build a solid and reusable APIs, it will be a great foundation for you to move forward. So last but not least is Go back to the seasoning thing here, uh, seasonal thing here. Um, winter is coming. Uh, we hope that with this little talk here, help you to um, think about some different things. Eventually, hopefully, can help you to prepare your organization to prepare for more changes and support the changes by using this API as a foundation. So hopefully, we can all be able to experience the beauty of the transition and changes instead of facing the harsh winter down the road. So that's all my talk here uh, for now. I'd like to see if there's any questions that I can help to answer. So Jarvis, thank you so much uh, for your presentation. Uh, that was that's very interesting, a very nice, well-rounded um, you know, discussion on the topic. Just one quick question we've got time yeah. for, and that is, you know, you touched upon um, Okay, API product owner, and, and you know the word product is in there. Do you guys, you know, practice now API as a product methodology also within the organization? Um, in our situation, we're maturing that. Uh, still, there's a many still a long path for us too. But we're trying to get to that point. Uh, we're all agile and strong right now, so we're trying to adapt that process to work with the overall uh, safe methodologies and work with different product owners to find out how we can position the APIs down the road. So we're still maturing that, but we just noticed that the critical importance of having that role and that responsibility there. Okay, thanks a lot, Jarvis. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you for stopping by this session. Appreciate that. Uh, have a good session for the remaining of the conference. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.